On this week's episode of What's Your Fantasy Football, we're going to be discussing our sleeper picks right after this. Hey, look. Ruining their dreams under pressure. Peachy be the one to bless ya, but don't test her. The queen reigns supreme. <laughs> you know what I mean? Add the boy Breezy Prince like a king. When the two come together in any weather, they form a bond, stay tight in any measure. So it's my pleasure. The number one team, let the world know what's your fantasy. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to What's Your Fantasy Football Show. It's your host, The Wayne Breezy, Crystal Peachy B, in the place to be. And on today's episode, we're not going to waste any time. Now, listen, do us a favor. Number one, like this joint. Number two, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section. I've been reading some of the comments, Peachy, and they've been coming at us, and I like it. I like it a lot. And number three, if you're new to the channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button so that way you don't miss any episode that we have of what's your fantasy football today's episode we're going to discuss sleeper picks pg before we get into our sleeper picks you know what what makes a sleeper pick like why why do why is there something even called the sleeper picks a sleeper pick is those unexpected players that just come out of nowhere and change your fantasy lineup there's always one that just pops up like a breakout player that just nobody's expecting it happens every single year and it's always a surprise whenever it does it's usually one before it the um in the previous year that shined but didn't get a chance to shine as well as they wanted because they have a fantasy star in front of them there it is so it's a player that's going to burst out onto the scene and you may draft this player, you may not. Now, listen, we're going to give you some players that we feel like you need to pay attention to. You can get later on in the draft. These aren't players that are going to go very early in the draft. They might be some older players in the league. They might be some newer players in the league. Some of our sleeper players, even maybe players that just came out and were rookies last year, we want you to keep an eye on them uh, depending on where you are drafting. So let's go ahead and get to our sleeper picks. We got a lot of them. Now, what we decided to do is we created our fantasy football lineups. So Peachy has a lineup. Breezy has a lineup. We're going to go through our lineup. Quarterback, two running backs, two receivers, a tight end, a kicker, I mean a flex, a kicker, and a defense. So your flex can be either a tight end, a wide receiver, or a running back. We do not do super flexes. That's just not our thing. Peachy, what's a super flex, though, for those that may not understand what the super flex is? A super flex is is um, a player that um, is a. I'm trying to remember. Oh my god, it oh, just slipped my mind. It's when you can add the quarterback <laughs> to the flex, right? Yes, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. That's what it is. It's it's a four position uh, place on your lineup where you can choose four positions instead of three. Three. That's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's basically when you add that quarterback position yes. and now your whole draft processing goes a totally different mm -hmm. way because you can get more points by adding a quarterback. Uh, and then, as you know, it's funny. Some t some leagues have two dual quarterback mm -hmm. leagues, like where you it's not a super flex and you need two quarterbacks. So mm -hmm. it's so it's so crazy. We are strictly <laughs> to the basics and we're doing full PPR. So this would be based on full PPR standings points per reception so let's go ahead and get down to it here we go we got our joints we're gonna start off well um, this is my pick i pick kyla murray uh, a lot of people probably are like well how is he a sleeper pick i mean listen he came off of an injury last year he came back in uh and 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 once he started playing he started producing numbers now the cool thing is he's going to be getting a number one wide out uh, with the number one wide out in Marvin Harrison Jr., who may just be the number one rookie wide receiver you're going to want to pick up. Uh, you know, it's it's so interesting. Uh, I think I think Kyler Murray is going to have a tremendous season. Peachy, just really quickly, like, what are your thoughts on Kyler Murray? Uh, he was averaging about, I would say he averaged about, I want to say 19 points. Uh, he scored 151 points. NPPR in 2023, 2024, 206. You go back to that 2020 season, though, he put up 381 points. I believe he would get those points back this season. What are your thoughts real quick? Kyler Murray, 
I think it's even though a lot of people are not going to look at him as being a sleeper. There's a lot of of really good fantasy quarterbacks that are, that are going to be taken before him. So I do look at him as being a sleeper with him recovering still and just trying to get back in everything. Like Breezy said, he does have MHA, which is really, really awesome for him to have. And a plethora of running backs and receivers. I think Kyler is going to have a, a big year. You can get him later. That's what's going to boost your lineups. Yeah, I feel like Kyler is going to have, like this year, he's going to have that Lamar Jackson effect. Uh, he's a good thrower, uh, great runner, pocket breaks down, great pocket awareness, can make plays. I understand his size is an issue, but he is dealing, he has been dealing with injuries as of lately. Uh, but they do run, they do look to run the ball well with James Conner, and they drafted um, Trey Benson out of Florida State. So I think Kyler Murray would be my sleeper. You chose a different sleeper quarterback, and I can't wait to get your take on that. So you got my man, Kirk, Captain Kirk Cousins, and, and I'm excited to hear about Kirk Cousins. Go ahead. The reason why that I chose Kirk Cousins as my sleeper is, one, because coming from the Minnesota Vikings, going to the Atlanta Falcons is going to be – Falcons is going to be a little different for Kirk. Kirk's also coming off of an injury. So a lot of people are nervous about him recovering from his ACL injury that he had that took him out of last season. In Atlanta, he has a plethora of weapons to throw to and call Pitts. Also, Bijan Robinson, which is a pass catching back. He has um, um, London. He has, he, there's a bunch of options that he has on this squad. I'm looking for Kirk Cousins to really surprise some people and to, to have a, a top season with the Atlanta Falcons. You mentioned weapons. I mean, he lost to Justin Jefferson. He lost the rookie Jordan Addison. Uh, but he's he doesn't have anybody compared to Justin Jefferson on his roster. But Drake London can be a superstar. You mentioned Drake London. I totally forgot about Drake London. Uh, but the Bijan Robinson one is key. He hasn't had a running back this great in a long time. Thank you, son. Uh, this great in a long time. Uh, but just think about what he did last year before his injury. Week one, 20 points against Tampa. Week two. 36.56 points against Philly on the road week three 31.68 points against uh the Chargers week four he had a low game against Carolina at 13 but then KC 23.8 uh Chicago low 10.7 as a you know whatever <laughs> San Francisco he put up 25 points at Green Bay he put up 23 points and then he got injured guess who he didn't play in the Atlanta game interesting and now he plays <laughs> for atlanta so those are our sleeper quarterbacks guys kyla murray kurt cousins wait a minute peachy we chose two nfc quarterbacks so let that sink in all right we're going to the running backs uh my first sleeper pick who to me pprs kid you want to grab deandre swift he's going to be on a whole new team he's going to be with the chicago bears uh when i think about deandre swift uh he can run the ball hard he could be a thousand yard running back but it's his ability to receive out of that backfield that i like the most now that he's going to be going to the bears they've got weapons they've got a quarterback and rookie caleb williams i believe that's going to be able to get the ball out peachy what's your just takes overall on deandre swift Wow, one, he is going from one Philly team that was loaded to a Chicago team that's also loaded. The coolest thing about Swift is he's going to be catching passes from the rookie, uh, who Caleb Williams, who is, is slated to have a pretty decent year himself now. He, Swift's going to be out there with a bunch of um, other weapons, which is why he's our sleeper because Chicago is loaded and I mean they are loaded from top to bottom and the thing I like about Swift is he doesn't have to be the bell cow they have other running backs right but it's going to be his ability like you said to be a pass catcher out of the backfield we're talking PPR you don't want to pass up on him and there's going to be somebody that's going to reach on him and so do you risk that and miss out and look for a different type of pass catching running back or do you try to snatch him up rounds five round six round six i mean it's to your discretion i know for me personally he helped me out last year i know toward the end of the season his numbers and stats got the points got low 
but he was consistent when they were utilizing him properly. I will say after that, uh, you know, that one game where he got rocked, after that San Francisco 49ers game, he never really recovered. Had a pretty decent game, got 15 points against the Giants, but after that, he got rocked. Different scene, different environment for DeAndre Swift. Make sure you grab him as a sleeper pick. Peachy, you went with Jerome Ford in Cleveland. Talk about my man, Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Let me tell you, Jerome Ford won me some last year. He he did really well, especially with Nick Chubb getting hurt. And now with Chubb on the mend of still tr trying to get back to what he was doing, Jerome Ford is, is, I'm watching him. He's getting drafted a little bit higher than a lot of people thought he was going to. But he's still a sleeper because you still have Chubb who is destined to have a really great year. But don't worry, Cleveland has plenty of packages from that quarterback, Deshaun Watson, to Ford. So I'm looking for good things out of Ford again this year. Same here. He's a bruiser back, but they also utilize him in the receiving game. Um, they're going to utilize him. He's definitely going to – he's he's probably going to average at least double digits, I would say, in points. So – whether it's 10, whether it's 20. Uh, he didn't have a game. His highest scoring was 26 points against the New York Football Jets, and they have a pretty good defense. Uh, his second highest was 24 against his conference rival, I mean against his division rival, Pittsburgh. So it, defenses don't phase him. He's a bruising type of running back out of Cincinnati. That's where he went to school, and now he's playing for Cleveland. Definitely a great sleeper pick. You're going to want to make sure you try to pick him up because guess what? Not only is he a, is he a sleeper pick, he was going to he has been destined and ordained as their number one back going into the season. So Jerome Ford is going to be a player you're going to want to pick up. My next running back, my next sleeper running back, I don't know. I usually stay away from the Tampa Bay Buccaneer players, but for some reason, it's hard, right? It's difficult. I thought Rashad White was going to be, and then Rashad White bust out onto the scene last year and made me a believer. I don't know if it's because he switched his number to number one, but at the end of the day, Rashad White uh, is a player you're going to want to pick up. This dude averaged double-digit points every game. It didn't have the super breakout fantasy football points. Um, didn't really get featured as a receiving type of back, but I think that's going to change a little bit. Um, Rashad White out of Arizona State I think is going to be a prominent key piece in what they're going to do. You can see he helped Baker Mayfield change his career around. It's allowing Mike Evans to continue to do things because you know what the key is? Run the ball, set up play-action pass. I think that's always going to be the formula. PG, quick thoughts on Rashad White. First of all, going back to that number one, there's a couple of awesome number ones in the NFL now that changed their number that I, I think are, are going to be Whoa. dynamic. <laughs> <Deep>. <laughs> <Right>? Okay. <laughs> but um, as far as Tampa Bay goes, Breezy's right. Like I, I also try to stay away from, from Bucks people, but Rashad, it seems to just be there and he's just calling for to, to have those, those great games to where they can save your, your fantasy league. So I would definitely keep him in mind. If you do see him floating out there later in the rounds, I would definitely pick him up. It's it's like this, right? He's a number one running back on a team. He's their feature back. And he's not going to get drafted early. Now, there might be some good old fantasy gurus out there that know exactly what we're talking about. And he might not end up being a sleeper. He might end up being featured as their number one running back. So God forbid if you're drafting later, rounds nine, round if you're drafting at pick nine, pick ten, pick eleven, pick twelve. I hope you're not in a fourteen man league. You're gonna want to scoop him up. You do not want to pass over on him. He's gonna end up being your one running back, but he'll help you out. And so I'm telling you, he's going to be a sleeper if you can get him onto your roster, whether he's featured or whether he's not. Um Get, make sure you get this kid on your, your roster. He's going to get you double-digit points consistently. Doesn't have any super explosive games with 26. He didn't have a game scoring over. Wait, hold up. I'm looking at the wrong Look at the wrong gear. My apology. He didn't have any super high games. He did have one against a tough defense. Guess which defense 
he had was an AFC team, AFC South team, on top of that, where he scored almost 30 points. Can you guess what team that is? Uh, that'd probably be the Saints. It was the, the AFC, not NFC. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Wow. The Colts? It was the Houston Texans. Really? The Houston Texans. Oh, wow. Week nine. Okay. He put up 27 <laughs> point nine points he put up 27.9 points so listen you're gonna want to get this kid he's their feature back pick up rashad white peachy your second back is also in the state of ohio <laughs> by the name of chase brown that's our little cousin for those that don't know peachy mm -hmm. and, and wayne breezy brown our cousin chase brown shout out to chase uh and his brother sydney that plays for the philadelphia eagles even though i don't like giving eagle their props <laughs> <laughs> sorry nephew if you're watching um chase brown you chose him pg you go ahead and talk a little bit about why you chose chase brown as a sleeper pick okay the reason why that i chose chase brown as a sleeper pick is because you know they moved on from joe mixon he is now in houston rolling with the texans speaking of the afc south and they have zach moss but I, I feel big things coming for Chase Brown. I think that what Cincinnati would like to do this year is kind of split up that running back um, plays and everything. And Chase is also great in the backfield. And he's also good at catching the ball. So I'm really excited about Chase in these PPR leagues. He may not be a sleeper pretty soon because a lot of people are paying attention to him already. Again, he's one of those picks that he's their feature back. I know they picked up Zach Moss and free agency. Chase Brown is going to be the feature back. He's going to be the Jerome Ford of the Cincinnati Bengals. Zach Moss is going to be able to come in and help relieve some of that, be some of the pass catching out of the backfield as well. But listen, you go into a feature back, and, and if you look at his fantasy points from last year, yeah, they're low, 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 but you got to remember – he didn't get the green light till later on in the season, literally like the last quarter or the last third of the season. High score points, 19.5. That was against the Colts, which PG guessed the other team. <laughs> so that was against the Colts, and they got a pretty good line up front. So he was able to bang forward on that. He had some pass catching in that game as well. So Chase Brown, make sure you scoop him up. PG said he won't be a sleeper, not after this season. I think after this season he'll be a featured back uh, moving forward so you're definitely going to want to pick up uh uh chase young this move to the the, the infamous wide receiving positions and this kid from michigan state Jaden reed now look he's my he's my he's my number one sleeping sleeper wide receiver why because when he's on the football field he's electric boogie woogie woogie like he's definitely a player you want i wanted to go with a different player i know i we got two wide receiver spots but i had to pick between the two and I feel like they both played the same amount of times and got injured at the same same time. They they had the same type of injuries. But I really love Jaden Reed. Um, I think his connection with Jordan Love is going to be like electric. I knew this kid was going to be a problem when I met him at the Senior Bowl a few years back. Um, but this is what you're going to get. And 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 when you go back to 2023, before I get your take on him, Peach, uh, you know. He just had games where he flashed, and I'm gonna be honest. This kid helped save my season. I I might have I might have came in the second place. That was because I forgot he wasn't playing. He wasn't playing in a game, and I left him in my starting damn lineup in like the championship game or something like that. I can't remember what happened, but toward that second half of the season, I'll say starting starting that second half of the season, he started putting up double digit points, and he started doing it consistently. And that is the key. Consistently and consecutively, he was getting points. So Jaden Reed is my guy. Any thoughts on Jaden Reed? Jaden Reed with Jordan Love is money. Just put it that way. Jordan Love also has a couple of weapons back there as well. But Jaden Reed is is the real deal. I think I have him in two of my lineups, I think. And I'm very, very excited about this kid's success. I think that he's going to have a breakout season this year. He's actually one of my breakout players that I feel like is really going to bring your lineup. So to, if you can get him, I would definitely grab him up. I so see touchdown do, machine all over him. We got to do a breakout player episode mm -hmm. now that you said that. 
Uh, eight touchdowns last year, 94 targets, but 64 receptions. Uh, and again, he dealt with injuries. Um, you want to know who my other, the person, like I, like, I know I picked somebody else, but the kid Downs from Indianapolis. Yes, Josh Downs. Josh Downs. Mm -hmm. It was between these two. For my wide receiver one sleeper. That's that's he's my wide receiver one sleeper. So uh yeah, that it was gonna come down to those two. So guys, if you guys know who Josh Downs is out there, he's he's a real one. Peachy, your wide receiver one is Khalil Shakir out of Buffalo. Tell us why. Wow, okay. So first of all, anyone who's catching passes from Josh Allen is gonna have a great day. <laughs> Four starters. With them losing Stefan Diggs, though. They need wide receivers to step up. So you have Shakir back there. You have Keon Coleman. They have a few injured wide receivers. That's why I really believe that Shakir is going to not only break out, he's going to bust out this year. I'm very, very happy for this kid. Josh Allen is going to target. He's going to get monstrous amount of, of targets and attempts at getting these touchdowns so i'm really excited about shakir that whole that receiving core is nice it's really nice that buffalo has now very well said i mean listen um when you look at what he did last year and i'm just checking out his stats i mean i get that the targets weren't as high but there's no more stefan dig so who's going to be the next man up here in this offense with um you know josh allen and so uh, he looks like it's going to be him it looks like he's going to be the guy that's going to be able to continue to find ways to move the chains for his quarterback he had 45 targets last year 39 receptions 611 yards um and two touchdowns so i believe that stuff is going to move up due to the fact now he's he has the opportunity to be the featured guy as a wide receiver in his offense i know they brought in curtis samuel but He's a veteran. Uh, I think Khalil will be a, a great player. I always liked him coming out of Boise State. Thought he would be a great return guy as well. Mm -hmm. But now he's going to be featured as a wide receiver. This is a great sleeper pick, too, by the way. Um, you know, he did, these are, and, and guys, people that are watching the show, these are people, that, players that did not make our top tens that we right. th we thought about putting in top tens. Like, you know what I mean? I'm going with an Ohio State kid. His name is Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, this is my wide receiver, too. It's something about this kid I like. He dealt with the injuries at the beginning of the season, but then he came in and let everybody know that he is a professional football player. Um, he, you know, earlier in, like I said, early in the season, he was just getting kind of like accustomed to the, the speed of the game. He didn't really play that uh, that preseason and things like that. But I thought he finished pretty strong. 93 targets, 63 receptions. Sound like Jaden Reed, right? It sounds just like Jaden Reed. Four touchdowns. So if you like Jaden Reed and you can't get Jaden Reed, but you want Jaden Reed type of production, uh, you want to draft this kid uh, in Seattle. Uh, and, and I think he's going to be featured a little bit more now that Tyler Lockett is getting a little older. Uh, DK Metcalf is still their number one. So if they're taking and putting the stuff on him, Jackson Smith has a chance to stand out and be a star in Seattle. What are your thoughts on your former Ohio State kid? <laughs> Without mentioning the Buckeyes, he literally is one of my favorites. I don't like it because he's in not a 49er division at all. Not one bit. But <laughs> anyway, he is outstanding also they have a new offensive staff led by ryan grubb that was in washington i'm talking about washington the, the university of washington so the huskies. And, yes the huskies and we know how their offense is just so dynamic and that's what he has brought to this seattle team i'm looking for ninjigba to have a monstrous year this year i feel like a lot of the focus is going to be on dk and everything and i'm just looking for for him to to have a monstrous year no matter if geno smith is throwing him the ball or somebody else is i still look for him being more comfortable in this offense and has shined so far i mean in preseason he's looked great so definitely someone that you want to keep an eye on to get in your lineups if you can later but i tell you what you may not be able to do that because he might not be a sleeper in a lot of people's minds. He might be one of the ones that you would want to get. So, 
I like the way you're thinking. I like the way you're thinking. Listen, don't miss out on drafting this kid. If you could pick him up later on in the draft, uh, a bye week, he's probably going to be able to do his thing, keep your team afloat. Uh, and some people may have to draft him and use him as a flex or as a starter. Uh, you just uh, you never know how your season is going to go. Speaking of that, PG's wide receiver two is? Mr. Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers uh, came from the New England Patriots, of course. He was there for a couple of years. But now he's in the silver and black. And they have a whole new offensive staff there. And you know that everybody's going to have their eye on Devontae Adams. So I'm looking for Myers to really shock some people and to do what he was doing when he was in New England. And that's catching passes. Very, very excited about this kid behind Adams because I feel like that Myers is going to have, like, by the end of the season, we might be saying Devontae who? Because I feel like Myers is going to break out. <laughs> A little controversy on the you, fantasy show today. <laughs> you spicy today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, spicy peach. That's a drink. You got to turn that into a drink. Golly. <laughs> I hope not. I, uh, but listen, th- you said it. You said it. You said it. I, I can't co-sign that one. Uh, that's the f- Speaking of Devontae Adams, you can see the blur of him in the background of this photo. <laughs> right? He's looking at Peachy like, what the f- you talking about, Willis? Uh, anyway, no, Jacoby Myers might be a great sleeper pick to pick up. You're looking at you. I'm looking at Jacoby Myers. I'm like, yo, this kid produced. He definitely produced. He had a few games almost. He had a couple of games almost at 30 points last year. Uh, the majority of his games were in that 20 point fantasy football point range. As far as how he was utilized, 106 targets last year, 71 receptions. So even with a Devontae Adams, they were getting the ball to Jacoby Myers. He also had eight touchdowns last year. So, you know, that's 71 points on PPR just off receptions. You know what I'm saying? 71 points, 807 uh, yards. So that's another 80 points per yard. And then you go and add in the eight touchdowns. This dude scored 218 points last year, almost 219 points in fantasy football. Uh, you're definitely going to want to pick him up as a as a sleeper pick like it's it's, it's a it's a no brainer uh you know what i mean now we got to get to our flex so pg and i each picked a flex position uh or did i go tight in here hold up i guess i went tight in here so i know i didn't put a tight end in my flex so it must have got flexed around now that i look at it but let's see how this pans out so this is my tight end one uh cole commit uh, before we get to the flex position. So Cole Komet was a touchdown king last year. And that was with uh, Justin Fields and whatever the Bears were doing at the quarterback position. This year is going to be a little different. I think they they got a consistent quarterback. Uh, I think they're going to be just fine. He put up 181 points last year as a tight end. You know what? He was targeted 90 times. Ooh. 73 per, uh mm-hmm. receptions that's seven seven points just off off of excuse me 73 points off of receptions alone another seven point uh 70 point one points or however you want to average out just from yards he had 719 yards okay and he has six tds he has six tds so i believe he's going to be a fierce tight end in that system in that chicago system and now it, it, they seem like they have some type of rhythm and consistency at that quarterback position with caleb uh being able to extend plays his ability to extend plays um I, 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 you know what pg if you i think cole Komet this season with a guy like caleb williams may be the second coming i'm gonna say this of travis kelsey he, he may just be the second coming of travis kelsey i'll give myself the wait and the reason why i say that though i, don't, I feel like i'm not far-fetched in saying that I, I mean listen this kid was able to put up numbers and now he's going to have a guy that's going to be able to extend plays and the tight ends usually find ways to get open in the end zone and so it could be a really good 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 season for Cole Komet any thoughts on Cole Komet and I hope your tight end is next I'm gonna try to <laughs> fix that slide um Cole Komet I completely agree with you I think that he is going to have a great season with Caleb throwing him the football I mean think about like his stats with Justin Fields and I forgot the other quarterback that was out there sometime for Justin Fields but the whole point is is that he was still catching him he was still getting touchdowns 
he was still helping out this Bears offense. So this year, since the Chicago Bears are slated to be one of the best offenses in the National Football League this year, then I'm quite sure that Komet, of course, is going to help with that. And I'm very excited about him being out there. There are a lot of weapons to throw to, and that's why he's more of a sleeper. <laughs> because there's a lot going on out there in the Chicago offense. <laughs> a lot going on. Red zone target threat. Good luck, but you better pick up Cole Komet. I'll say it again. A lot going on. Red zone target threat. Good luck. You better pick up Cole Komet. You got to get the flow because there's a <laughs> rhyme going on. Cole Komet is my sleeper tight end. And I did this right, Peachy. I thought I did it wrong, and I did it right because next up is Hunter freaking <laughs> old man Henry. This dude's been in the league for 55,000 years, and he continues to find ways. No, seriously. He, he been in the league when you go back to the San Diego Chargers when he was the the, the tight end two to uh, uh, Antonio F Gates. I was about to say Freeman. Antonio <laughs> Gates, right? And then he moved around, and, and now he's with New England doing the same dang on thing. Why did you pick my man Hunter Henry? Yes, Breezy is right. Hunter Henry has been in the league for 100 years. But let me tell you, the reason why that I play him put, put him as a sleeper is – the New England Patriots, I really don't see a standout wide receiver for the Patriots. So I'm looking at Hunter Henry to, again, reinvigorate his career with a new offensive staff, new people on the field, a new quarterback in Drake May. I think that he is going to... And what do they always say? A tight end is a young quarterback's best friend. So I'm looking for for him to shine this year in New England. So whenever you get your tight end one, even tight end two, and then you always have that one because you know how the injuries happen in the National Football League, definitely keep Hunter Henry in mind. Don't let the old man fool you because he can still get up, and I believe that he's going to, again, reinvigorate his career with the Patriots so just to be fair he's going into his ninth season <laughs> it just seemed like he's been in the league for a very long in time football years though for a tight end nine is this that's that's, that's he almost doing he's almost doing a bid yes right? when I think of our tight end George Kittle who's going mm -hmm. into his eighth season it just doesn't seem like he's going into his eighth season it seems like Hunter Henry is going into his 32nd season <laughs> and he doesn't look old I just feel like I've seen this name yes. forever right i've seen it forever so again he might not even have been there with antonio gates i could have been just making it up i just felt like he was there with antonio gates uh but he did enter the league in 2016 uh last year 119 points in the ppr league if you guys are focused on ppr um that's how much total points he put 61 targets but 42 receptions so that's 42 points right there 419 yards so you're not going to get the yardage from him uh but you may get the touchdown six touchdowns and you talked about drake may i think the patriots are going to be rolling with jacoby Brissett, and so i think that's who he's going to be getting the balls and the passes from jacoby Brissett. so like a veteran to a veteran even better that's even better <laughs> oh man that's even better so yeah pick up Hunter Henry. And here's the cool thing. Nobody's going to pick up Hunter Henry. So wait. If you don't have the ability to draft one of the top 10 tight ends, go back and watch that show, top 10 tight ends. If you miss out on the top 10, you can wait to the end. Nobody's going to pick up Hunter Henry, and he'll get you points on your fantasy football team. All right. Here go our flex guys. Now, there are so many players you could have went with in the flex. I chose a wide receiver here. I like wide receivers in my flex uh when i can so i'm trying to you know it's a ppr league so one of my strategies is to look for the wide receivers that i think are going to be featured as pass catchers rasheed rice had a phenomenal rookie season now, i know he had an off season for the ages i know he just <laughs> he did the most i don't know even how it was going to pan out for the young fella uh but he put up 212 and a half points in ppr last year he was targeted 102 times they got some extra help for him uh, with the speed of the rookie Xavier Worthy or whatnot. They, I don't know if Hollywood Brown is going to be back or if he's, yeah, I know he's dealing with the injury, but 79 receptions, almost a thousand yard receiver, 938 yards. He put up seven touchdowns. This dude was on it. Uh, Rasheed Rice, any thoughts on Rasheed Rice or what, well, you know, I, I don't think you should stay away from him, but what are your thoughts, Peachy? 
Rajee Rice, uh, if I'm not mistaken, any out for a couple of games or something like that, he yes. will be back. So he's just out due to the, the NFL rules. He's not hurt. There's nothing wrong with him. So when he comes back, he's going to hit the ground running. I really feel like that he is still a compliment to this Kansas City offense and what Pat Mahomes likes to do. You know that everybody is going to be blanking in Kelsey in this offense. That does free up Rasheed Rice. Not to mention, Rasheed Rice has one of the most important plays in Super Bowl history. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I didn't. We, that we're I not, not going to mention it. But we might kidding. have Chiefs fans watch this, and we have to just you know Ask this fantasy, and we got. <laughs> so he did unfortunately ruined our complete just rest of the offseason but Rasheed Rice is gonna be a great sleeper back there with Worthy and see what I don't understand the other is, guys that they have back I there. made it you know you, you didn't you didn't get any what's the word bias from me <laughs> on this show if you don't know that I'm a 49er fan by now. Well, now you know. I mean, we, we do a show called Nitty Gritty Niners. I don't I don't know. You know, I'm I'm repped. We represented by a brand that represents the 49ers. You know, in residency, I'm wearing the hat. I have my own clothing that represents the San Francisco 49ers. So I did my job not to be biased, and I put him as my sleeper. But you did not have to bring up what he did to the team and the Super Bowl. That's cold. If this was a live show, I would have kicked you off, like <laughs> literally. But since it's not, you can stay. Let's go to your sleeper pick, uh, Peachy, because you chose a 49er. You got to be kidding me. And you chose out of all the 49ers, you picked Jordan Mason. And I can't wait to hear the explanation on this one. I'm going to shut up now uh, because I feel this is a biased choice. But it might not be. Explain your choice, Jordan no, Actually, Mason. this is not a biased choice. Jordan Mason is going to be running back number two behind Christian McCaffrey. And I do believe that the 49ers are going to take a little bit of the load off of Christian McCaffrey with Jordan Mason, as a matter of fact. Now, yes, it's my wish list that he's running back number two. I could be wrong, but I really believe that he's going to be. Mason is going to be featured so much more this season, and I cannot wait. And I did draft him in two of my leagues and put him on my bench for now because I think towards the middle of the season, I'm going to need him, and he's going to shine for me as a great sleeper pick. Well, that's why I picked him in the flex spot and also because he's a 49er. And I always believe getting someone at 49er on my team is going to bring why my lineup good you luck. Just, you just did the bias. <laughs> I know. You, you, were all, you were almost finished with the soliloquy on why to draft Jordan trying. Mason. And then you biased it, it right? <laughs> with Because he's a 49er. There it is. That's why Peachy drafted Jordan. Ain't no way in the world. First of all, listen, I'm not trying to go against her list, but that's what we're here for. I wouldn't pick him up. I wouldn't use him. I wouldn't consider him a sleeper pick. I would consider him week by week, depending on how he's utilized as a waiver pick. And so we'll discuss that later on in the season. But Christian McCaffrey's the guy, and I don't see anybody else really touching the rock. And even if Jordan Mason does touch the rock, it's not going to be a high production unless he gets – uh, 70 yards every time he carries the ball like right so like like that's what i'm trying to say like if he's if he's around the goal line he gets in he might be your touchdown guy he kind of reminds me of what ramondre stevenson does in new england yes but ramondre stevenson is their feature back right but they run the same similar style they can catch well they can they could do stuff well because he's not featured though it's my only red flag when it comes to Jordan Mason, it's not a shot at Jordan Mason. It's the how he's utilized. I want people to understand that because uh, I know the faithful are going to crucify me for this. Nobody but, is against Jordan Mason. We love Jordan Mason. Oh, absolutely. But I but I know I'm going to get crucified. But this is fantasy football, and I'm just trying to help people, like mm -hmm. try to steer people in in, a, in, in, in in a proper direction. Now, if you're a 49er fan like PG and you want to be biased and draft them, you draft them. Here's, what I, here's why I'm saying this, though. I... When when Elijah Mitchell was running back too, I would make sure I picked up Elijah Mitchell. And how did that work out? And I'm just saying, even when he was healthy, they didn't use him. 
right? So, me personally, I would go with a sleeper bag that might be featured a little bit more. That's what I'm going to say. I don't have a bag for you right now. I did my sleeper bags. I don't have a flex sleeper, whatever, whatever, whatever. You ca call me Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but that's where I am. All right, we're on to the kickers. We're almost done. We got the kickers and we got the defenses. All right, so we got the kickers and we got the defenses. Now, I'm going Daniel Carlson out of Las Vegas. Why? Because he can kick it. Uh, that, it's just as simple as that. He can kick it, uh, and I think he's going to be a top fantasy football kicker. Tell you what, he had three games last season where he had over double-digit points. Excuse me, four games. I apologize because I can't read. He was responsible for 117 points um, or whatnot in fantasy football, uh, and the key is, like, how many is he kicking consistently over such and such you know 150 yarder 940 to 49 yards so nine times four is 36 points and then six at the 30 to 39 so you got to factor all that in i'm going daniel carlson this year he didn't make our top 10 but if you don't get one of the top 10 kickers and you wait like me to draft a kicker at the very end and daniel carlson is there guys don't draft your kicker until the end <laughs> okay Drive your kicker then. I mean, unless you're going after the top two, maybe three kickers in the league, and you're going to get them in round 13, 14, or whatever, don't draft your kicker into the end, uh, please. Um, but anyway, Daniel Carlson is my sleeper kicker for 2024. Peachy, who you got? I am all about reviving your career. That's the Ooh. theme of my sleepers. Greg the wow. Leg Zerline. Is has this Legatron? Another this... yes. Has wow. another shot in in New York. So when he was with the Rams, which he started out, which is funny because we were talking about that a while ago, but he started out with the St. Louis Rams. And yes. <laughs> and oh my the gosh. LA Rams. That's so right. He's in there from 2012 to 2019. He was with the Rams. Didn't work out for him with Dallas. Not quite sure that that was all his fault. Let's just put it that way. But he has a chance to revive his career with the Jets again this year. He's actually been with the Jets since 2022. And I'm still looking for him for great things. So I think he's going to be a great sleeper. Just like Breezy said, you don't want to draft your kicker really early anyway. So if Greg the Leg is available towards the end, then by all means, pick him up. Because I'm just on this career revival thing or just out of – the darkness out of the shadows back into the light for some of these players and things so i'm very excited about greg the leg zerla i like that you said that and, and, and here's the thing right you I, I went with daniel carson i said he had four games with double digit points taz means 10 or more greg the leg Zerline missed one missed the game last year okay um but he had one two three four five six seven games with 10 or more points seven seven games and the lowest that he had within those double digits was 11 so he scored over the 10 and he got you 11 his highest was 18 points in an 18 point game 17 point game 16 point game okay uh 14 and 11 Listen, you could probably get him very last to dead last in your draft. Uh, and I believe with Aaron Rodgers being there, their chances of kicking more field goals will come into fruition for Greg Zerline, opposed to the quarterbacks that they were dealing with. Agreed. Uh, you know, so this will give him a better opportunity. He had one over 50. He had, no, excuse me. I, I, I take that back. He had five plus 50 yard field goals that he made. 13 40 through 49 9 30 through 39 put up 139 points so i think we gave you some two sleeper picks at the kickers positions and daniel carlson from las vegas and greg the leg zerline from the new york football jets to where you don't have to get that top kicker man you know what the top kicker let's go with brandon aubrey out of i just want to see how many points he put up Last out of Dallas. Year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did I say? No, 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 nothing. You didn't. Uh, okay. 
Because <laughs> you know I'd be messing up. I'd be messing up. Damn, he put up 176 points. God <laughs> damn. All right, so like I said, if you want to go pick round 12, 13 to secure the number one kicker in fantasy football, that's fine. You know you're going to get probably 170 plus points to 200 points. Cool. You know, I, I just feel like go watch our top 10 kickers episode. It should be out soon. All right. Make sure you watch that and you'll see who we picked in our top 10. All right. So make sure you check that out. All right. Let's go ahead and cap this show off. PG, we've been doing really good. What a great job you're doing as well on the show. Get to the defenses. Listen, it's something about this Patriots defense that I feel like is going to punch the league in the mouth. They play in the AFC East. That means they got to deal with Buffalo, Josh Allen. They got to deal with uh, Aaron Rodgers and the New York Football Jets. And I'm always missing that last team in Miami where they got to deal with Tua and those weapons. But you know where the Patriots are locked and loaded? in the secondary and it's hard to throw or score on the patriots defense uh peachy i like this d i like the fact i like the mindset that they're going to be in their head coach is a defensive minded head coach uh and gerard mayo and i think their defense is going to be freaking on point and just so people can understand uh their defense put up 130 fantasy points last year 130 fantasy points last year they finished with 10 interceptions they act they actually scored a touchdown all right they had 36 sacks on the season which was lower than 2022 but they also had a lot of injuries those guys are going to be coming back and so they were a tough defense man and when i say tough it's about how many points that they allow so when you look at the defense, you want to focus on how many points did they actually like give up in the how many points did they actually score in the game, right? By a lot by eliminating the opposing team from scoring a lot. And the less your team scores, the higher the defensive points goes. And you can add some stuff to that to help boost up your points. Any thoughts on the Patriots before we get to your your defensive sleeper team? Nothing but that man that you see right there on your screen. Dog. Dog. is a whoo <laughs> what you said Dog. so breezy is 100 percent correct about that secondary and he got like, injured last year mm, yes just just to mind you he got injured like and mm -hmm. when you think a dog uh think of think of <laughs> think of the pat sertans of the leagues mm -hmm. this kid's gonna be right in that league mm -hmm. Uh, Lane Christian Gonzalez, that is from the Patriots. I feel like I just fanboyed on the New England Patriots, <laughs> and I, I'm not, I don't mean to. I just did they draft. I think I like the I like some of the players that they draft. That I think they brought back Jabril Peppers. Like they're going to be tight. Like they're going to be tight defensively, especially in that secondary. And we we'll see how their pass rush fears out. But you know, it's about getting interceptions and about scoring off those interceptions. PG, let's get to your sleeper defensive team. Oh, the. Oats, I see what you did here. And Breezy's gonna put this up there and just make me cry, of course. With sure enough, did that picture up on mm -hmm. the screen? The Indianapolis Colts front is absolutely amazing, led by that dude, DeForest Buckner. Then you got Quiddy Pay, Grover Stewart, Taquan Lewis. You just got the men, and then let's just go back to their secondary with Kenny Moore the second, and all those guys. The Indianapolis Colts and the AFC South are going to give the other teams a run for their money. Oh. Their defense did get strengthened with some some rookie help that they got, some free agent help they got. I'm really, really excited about this Colts defense. So if you can't get one of those top five or six defenses that are out there, definitely want to look at the Indianapolis Colts. Tough See defense. Big things coming this year. Big things coming. Uh, I mean, they got a game where they put up 28 points, but it was against Carolina. You know what I'm saying? They was against Carolina. If you couldn't score 25-plus points or more against Carolina, then you you suck. All right. So, <laughs> But they did have a few games that were like minus points, and that's a concern for me. Uh, Atlanta, minus three. Um, New Orleans, minus six. Rams, minus one. So you want to stay away from the minus games. They did finish with 139 points, which I think was like eight points higher than my sleeper fantasy. So just to do a quick recap, defense, we got the Colts. We got the Patriots, kickers. We got Greg Zerline. We got Daniel Carson. Uh, flex spot, we got running back Jordan Mason. We got wide receiver uh, Rasheed Rice. Tight ends, all right. 
sleepers. We got Hunter Henry. We got Cole Komet. Wide receiver two, we got uh, Jacoby Myers. We got Jackson Smith and Jigba. Wide receiver one, Khalil Shakur, Jaden Reed. Running back two, Chase Brown. Running back two, Rashad White. Running back one, Jerome Ford. Running back one, DeAndre Swift. QB one, um, Kirk Cousins. QB one, Kyler Murray. And, and the cool thing is these are QB ones, right? These are guys that are going to be QB ones for teams, depending on how you draft. Mm -hmm. So there is talent and depth a little bit later on in the draft. If you don't get your Lamar Jackson, your Josh Allen, uh, or, or your, uh, who am I missing? Like your Jalen Hurts. And Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, kind of like those top five guys. Mm -hmm right you're gonna want to pick up one of these dudes uh and i wouldn't be surprised if people go after you know the um the rookie caleb williams maybe even Jaden daniels mm -hmm. who's gonna be able to run it's the like ball a little bit yeah th these guys have been designated starters and if i if i had to pick a sleeper rookie pick mm -hmm. might be bo nicks out of denver like you know yeah at the quarterback position might be bo nicks yeah uh, looks like he's going to get the realm, um, and he's going to be the starting quarterback. He's already been designated the starting quarterback for Sean Payton. So, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. We're your host, the Wayne Breezy, Crystal Peachy Bree B. On this episode of What's Your Fantasy, we talked about our top sleeper picks. Make sure you like this show. Don't forget to check out some of the other shows uh, that we have, our top 10 at certain positions. Make sure you give that a check out. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Until the next time, keep your fantasy popping, baby. Thanks for tuning in. Look, ruin the dreams under pressure. Peachy be the one to bless ya, but don't test her. The queen reigns supreme. You know what I mean? Add the boy Breezy Prince like a king. When the two come together in any weather, they form a bond, stay tight in any measure. So it's my pleasure. The number one team, let the world know what's your fantasy.